Welcome to tutorial 6. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the depth buffer and make a pretty cool shader effect using it. It's not going to be too cool in that you probably aren't going to be using your games, but this learning how the depth buffer works is crucial for some later, um, some more advanced shader techniques. So we will start by making a new shader. Like in previous tutorials, I copied and pasted this base shader and we'll rename it to depth. Okay. So I'm going to open up the. Okay. So we have the fragment shader. We're going to be accessing the depth texture, which is texture number zero. However, because this is a text, um, because this this is actually a multi-sampled texture, so we will be doing um, using sampler 2D multi-sample. What this means is um, beyond the scope of this tutorial, but it's essentially saying that this texture has multiple samples associated to it, and you can access different versions of those samples. Uh, so let's let's draw the depth from this texture. We will only draw from the red channel though because we don't really. So we will only draw from the red channel because that's I think all the channels have the same depth um, value. So we will do so instead of texture, we will be doing texel fetch. Um, now, what's the difference between Texel? So, with uh, Texel Fetch, it's f whenever we use Sampler 2D MS, we have to use Texel Fetch instead. And we also need to put a zero at the end. Uh, this is LOD level. So, like I said before, there's multiple samples. We have to choose which sample we take. In the last tutorial, I changed I chords to chords, and we will actually use an I chords in this tutorial for integer coordinates. So just make a new I chords variable and that should be good. Uh, let's compile. Okay. Um, you have to use integer coordinates for this Texel fetch function. Um, there's a few different function prototypes or I guess a few overloaded functions but I think they all use the integer coordinates. Uh, so we'll, we'll just use that to keep it simple. So we have the depth here. Oh, okay. Sorry, I forgot to draw just one channel. Okay, I made a mistake. Sorry, I forgot to put an iVec2. Uh, this is an integer vec2. And so we this should work now. Yeah, okay. It's being kind of sloppy right now. Okay, so we actually have the depth. Uh, we're we're going to... What we're going to do is we're going to actually make the output color equal to the depth. So, actually, I'm just going to do three of these, and then we'll make the alpha value equal to one. Okay. Um, and I forgot it. Sorry, I forgot to assign this texture to the root. So we go grab the depth. Uh, so we can kind of see it, right? That looks pretty interesting. You can see that it's very, you can barely see anything except for very close values. Um, we actually have an issue with the way the depth texture, um, with how we're using the value we get from the depth texture. And I'm going to draw a picture to illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, so I will draw a diagram showing what we're doing right now and how we can solve it. So right now, if we have a camera, right, and let's pretend the camera is level with the ground. This is the viewing frustum. Um, I'm not sure if I introduced that word before, but that's what it. Uh, this sort of pyramid structure is called. Um, it originates from the camera. Your screen is this... Um, this is from the side, and the, your screen is this section. 
over here. Okay, so we have we have two ranges, uh, range values we care about. And these are actually both uniforms. They're called camera range. And they're the X value is the near camera range. The Y value is the far camera range. So when we draw from the texture, we're taking a texel, which is basically the texture equivalent to a pixel. And we get the value. Um, it's the value is between 0 and 1. Each value is stored in equal distance apart. So you might have um, like 1 over 256, 2 over 256, something like that. If we were to do that in this example, in this were a 3D world, we would have uh, each text, each um, coordinate, like this would be 0, this would be 1. Right, and this would be like, I don't know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. Uh, those values aren't actually possible, but that's uh, kind of beyond the point. Let's say it just rounds to 0 0.1 and 0 0.2. Anyway, um, so they're all equal distance apart. So instead, what we actually want is we want um, the close... So we want the closer points to be grouped closer together because... The depth difference is more noticeable for closer objects than farther objects. This is why you can see far in the distance, but also see pretty detailed stuff up close. Um, so as we get farther and farther, each of these corresponding points gets f um, farther and farther from each other apart. Like this could be even 0.5 or something like that, right? 0.75. Right, and this is one um, in terms of the value we draw from the depth from the depth buffer. And this will always this will be zero in the depth buffer, but it may not actually be zero. Um, the Z the camera range X won't be zero. So anyway, so we have to actually convert these coordinates into this range. Um, so the way we do that is we use this equation. I'm just going to show it because breaking down each part is kind of long. And uh, it, it just basically go, uh, follows this general idea, though. So the equation is this. So we have the camera x times camera y, so the near distance times the y distance. And remember, this is the actual distance. Um, so this would be like 100 meters or something and this would be like 0.1 meter remember it can't be zero because if you did x times y it would this would equal zero and it would mess up the equation so the rest of the equation looks like this uh, y minus the value we get from here let's just call it depth so I will do my best to draw that depth and then we will multiply depth by the difference between the far and the near. So that's y minus x. Um, so it just real quickly, if you were to plug in 0 here, uh, if depth were 0, so it would be equal to here. Uh, it would be 0 times x minus, or sorry, y minus x, which is equal to 0. x times y over y equals x. So this would equal x, and that's correct because that's what we define it as. Uh, let's do the same thing for y. So let's say the depth equals 1. Well, if the depth equals 1, it's 1 times y minus x. y minus y equals 0 minus x. Oh, sorry, plus x because it's y minus minus x. So we end up with x times y over x, which equals y, which is this location. Right, so this, equ this equation actually fits into these constraints, which is nice. Uh, I won't go over to intermediate values because I think that's... Um, if that were too confusing, don't worry too much about it. Uh, we'll, but we'll make an equation for this in the code to switch the depth coordinate the depth value with the actual z value. So we'll first have to 
grab that uniform I was talking about, camera range. And when I was talking about X and Ys, these were the X and Ys I was talking about. Actually, we have to do this. Um, grab in the whole camera range value. All right, well, let's make a function. Um, so I think the function that's often called in the Letworks code is something like this. You can obviously make your own function. And no, it's not a void function. Um, so we take in depth. All right, so we have to return. So let's uh, follow what we had before. So we had camera range y times camera range dot. So camera range dot. Sorry, I keep messing up. Camera range dot x times camera range dot y over camera. In fact, let me put this on a new line. Camera range dot y minus put some spaces in between so it's easier to see. Minus depth times camera range dot y minus camera range why am I doing this times x so it's just like the equation I just showed which is why I showed it anyway we'll be using this function to convert to the, to the z value now so we're, this is the depth value is what we get from the texture the z value is what we're interested in though Okay, and so we have Z here. Let's fill it in. Um, yeah, so why it was going up and down. <laughs> okay, so I, had, so I again messed up a little. Um, uh, I figured out what the error with that was. Um, we're actually, what we're going to do is we're going to take out this IVEC. We're going to do i, we're going to make um, it over here, and we're going to derive it from this chords we got, because we flipped the chords y value, and so we want to we keep that. We still need to keep it flipped, I mean, for the exact same reason is um, why we flipped it here, and I went over that in, a, in an earlier video. Okay, so what we're going to actually do is we're going to grab the chords, and i vec2. Uh, we're going to times it by the buffer size. Right, so now it goes up and down. It's pretty nice. I uh, still notice it's very close, though. Um, only if Z is between 0 and 1 will you be able to see anything. Uh, and if Z is greater than 0, um, sorry, if Z is greater than 1, you're not going to be able to see anything, which is why it looks very cloudy, um, pretty close to the camera. So let's do something like z equals z. Um, so you can actually do times equals to multiply itself by something. And that was obviously bad. So now what we actually have is we actually have a nice depth buffer. We're actually visualizing what the depth buffer looks like. It looks kind of creepy, honestly. But uh, you can kind of make some cool effects with that. Why this is uh, exactly the same way as how you would implement fog, except you would blend, um, basically, you would you'd blend the values into the fog. So it actually does look very foggy, um, but if you notice, you won't actually see any textures because we're only visualizing the depth buffer. Just a heads up, if you actually want to implement a fog effect of your own, what you probably want to end up doing is to divide the z value um, by the difference in the camera range or something along those lines. Um, and that would give you a better fog effect. Right now we're just using the z value for the first 10 units um, ahead, which isn't great for actually implementing fog. Reading from the depth buffer is how you implement fog, but anyway, it's very simple to fix, but um, 
just a heads up on that. If you have any suggestions or um, comments about this video, please post them below. And thanks for watching.